One of football's most celebrated stars has to be the incomparable Diego Maradona. He played for six different clubs, as well as taking part in four World Cups for Argentina. The South American hero played his first game for Argentinos Juniors on the 20th of October 1976, 10 days before his 16th birthday. He stayed with the club for almost five years before being transferred to Boca Juniors. After playing for Barcelona, he went to Napoli, where he played the majority of his club games and reached the peak of his career. He went on to play for Sevilla and Newell's Old Boys before rejoining Boca Juniors in 1995. Diego Maradona was born on October 30, 1960, in Lanus, in the Buenos Aires province of Argentina, just south of the capital city in the greater Buenos Aires metropolitan area. He was raised in Villa Fiorito, a shanty town on the southern outskirts of the city. During the 60s and early 70s, Via Fiorito provided the training ground for a young craftsman learning the trade that would propel him to superstardom. He was born into a poor family. The fourth child of six, he grew up with three elder sisters and two younger brothers, Hugo and Eduardo, who both became professional footballers. At the age of 10, Diego was spotted by a talent scout while playing for his local club and started playing for the Little Onions, the junior team of Argentinos Juniors. Two years later, he became a ball boy for the first division games and would entertain spectators at half time, showing off his wizardry with the ball. While he was at Argentinos Juniors, English club Sheffield United submitted a bid of £180,000 to secure his services. The bid was rejected, but when Boca Juniors upped the offer to £1 million, Maradona was on his way to a new club. He joined the squad midway through the 1981 season and played through 1982. He'd come close to winning a league title with Argentinos, who finished second in their division in 1980. However, at Boca Juniors, he went one better, winning his first league winner's medal in his debut season with the club. Maradona repaid Boca's faith in him, constantly proving his star quality and exciting the crowds with his flair and finesse. In his short stint at Boca Juniors, Diego Maradona couldn't put a foot wrong. He was selected to play for Argentina in the 1982 World Cup, which brought him to the attention of Spanish club Barcelona. They were so impressed with the young star that they bought him for a then world record fee of £5 million. He went on to help the club win the Copa del Rey, Spain's annual National Cup competition, as well as the Spanish Super Cup, but it wasn't all good news at Barcelona. A bout of hepatitis and a broken leg threatened to put an end to his promising career, and Diego needed all his strength and determination to overcome the setbacks. Although he got his football career back on track, off the field he was getting into disputes with the team's directors. With no resolution in sight, Maradona demanded to be transferred out of Camp Nou in 1984. He was snapped up by Napoli in Italy's Serie A for another record fee of £6.9 million. It was here that Diego Maradona really began to catch light. He played a crucial role in delivering the club the most successful period in its history. 1986-1987 was to prove a landmark season for Napoli. They pulled off the double, winning the league title and the Coppa Italia in the same season. Maradona had already earned the adoration of the fans, but after helping make Napoli the first southern Italian team to win the league, he was elevated to the status of club icon, the hero they'd long been waiting for. Napoli placed second in the league the following year, during which Diego continued to dominate, becoming the league's top scorer. The 1988-89 season was to be another successful one. They were runners-up in the league and placed second in the Coppa Italia in 1989. 
The impressive season also produced a UEFA Cup victory, Napoli's first major European title. They defeated Juventus, Bayern Munich and Payoff on the way to the final, where they defeated VFB Stuttgart 5-4 on aggregate. Another Serie A title came with the 1989-1990 season, and they also claimed the Italian Super Cup in 1990. Unfortunately, however, the Maradona era was nearing its end. Rumours abounded that he'd started using drugs, and he failed the doping test by the Italian Football Federation, testing positive to cocaine. He was banned for 15 months. That marked the end of his reign at Napoli. He left the club in disgrace in 1992. He joined Spanish club Sevilla in 1992, but would never again repeat his previous form. Nor would Napoli win another Serie A title. As well as making a great name for himself at Napoli, some of Diego Maradona's finest moments were played out in the international arena. He made his debut for Argentina on the 27th of February 1977 at the age of 16 against Hungary. At 18, he starred in the World Youth Championship for Argentina before scoring his first senior international goal against Scotland on the 2nd of June 1979. Much to his disappointment, he was left out of the successful 1978 World Cup squad. However, after dominating the National League in the following seasons, the selectors could not deny him again. He played his first World Cup in 1982. Argentina lost their first match against Belgium. However, Maradona starred in the next match against Hungary, scoring twice in a convincing win. They also defeated El Salvador to progress to the second round, where they were defeated by Brazil and eventual winners Italy. Maradona captained the squad to victory at the 1986 World Cup. He was the team's driving force and was the most exciting and dominant player of the cup. He played every minute of every game, scoring five goals and making five assists. It was his part in a 2-1 win over England, however, that made him a legend. In the quarter-final match, he scored both of his team's goals, one famous and one infamous. Replays showed he scored the first goal by striking the ball with his hand. The referees didn't notice and the goal was allowed. It would forever become known as the Hand of God goal. The second goal, however, came to be remembered for very different reasons. Diego dribbled the ball past six English players, including the goalkeeper, to score the goal, which was later voted the FIFA goal of the century. Maradona also took part in the next two World Cup campaigns, during which Argentina failed to dominate. He ended up being sent home from the 1994 competition after testing positive to ephedrine. It marked the end of his illustrious international career and put paid to any hopes of another World Cup victory. Throughout his club and international career, he was revered as a god by the Argentinian fans. As his former teammates shaped up for the 2006 World Cup, he accepted a position as commentator for the Spanish television station Cuatro. After being presented to journalists at a press conference, he revealed his desire to one day coach the national team. Le deseo a, a, a la Argentina que salga campeón eh, y, y si sale campeón lucharé para, para ser el técnico de la selección campeona del mundo y si no lo es también eh, es algo que, que me debo a mí mismo que como voy a decir hice muchas cosas pero esto creo que es, eh, es el, la, la, la frutilla del postre de, 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 de toda mi vida de toda mi carrera. After the resignation of national coach Alfio Basile in 2008, Maradona immediately flagged his interest in the position. Despite possessing little managerial experience, it was announced on the 29th of October 2008 by AFA chairman Julio Grondona that Diego Maradona would take on the position from December. His goal for the team was to reach the World Cup finals, and although they suffered a humiliating 6-1 defeat to Bolivia along the way, equaling their worst ever losing margin, they managed to qualify in fourth place. With his on-field play bettered by none, the World Cup champion often found it hard to keep his feet on the ground. Not only did he possess sublime football skills, 
He literally had millions of fans in Argentina worshipping him as a football deity. This love for everything Maradona gave the football megastar a warped sense of reality, and pretty soon he would be making headlines for all the wrong reasons. In the mid-1980s, right at the peak of his brilliant career, Maradona slipped into his two-decade addiction to cocaine. It was allegedly during his two seasons with Spanish club FC Barcelona that the Latin American genius first experimented with the banned substance. However, as reported by BBC Sport, it was his transfer to Napoli in 1984 that elevated his newfound pastime into a full-blown addiction. Seven years on, Maradona gave the positive dope test that saw him banned for 15 months. Sadly, he didn't learn his lesson, and in the 1994 World Cup, he was ejected from the tournament, his international career effectively over. However, not all his off-field exploits were controversial. On November 7, 1989, Maradona married longtime fiancée Claudia Villafane at a ceremony held in Buenos Aires. Claudia and Diego had two children together, Dalma Maria and Janina Dionora. Despite stating that Claudia was the love of his life in his autobiography, Maradona also revealed that he hadn't always been faithful to her. His commitment issues added to his lengthy drug addictions and subsequent health problems led to the couple's divorce in 2004 after 15 years of marriage. They remain very good friends and have since been seen together in public on various occasions, including the 2006 FIFA World Cup. Politically, Argentina's greatest footballer has also found it hard to stay faithful. During the 90s, he openly supported the right-wing presidency of Carlos Menem. However, in more recent times, he has leaned more towards left-wing ideologies. Whilst receiving treatment in Cuba, his meeting with Cuban President Fidel Castro gave him the perfect opportunity to show off the tattoo of Fidel he has on his leg. The football legend also proudly revealed his tattoo of Ernesto Guevara. Although his marital problems and swinging political ties have raised concerns among his fans, since retiring from football, the biggest worry for his supporters has been their hero's health. Thanks to his drug addictions, Diego's weight ballooned at an alarming rate, resulting in some dramatic scares. During April of 2004, he was rushed to hospital after suffering a heart attack caused by a cocaine overdose. He was lucky to survive the ordeal, but after five days on a respirator, he was given the all clear. Clearly one near fatal incident wasn't enough to make him shake the habit. In March 2007, he was rushed to hospital a second time, sparking erroneous reports that he had died. Suffering from hepatitis and alcohol abuse, it seemed that Diego's lavish lifestyle had finally caught up with him. The doctors weren't optimistic. The state of Diego Armando Maradona's health is stable and is progressing. I wouldn't say in a very advanced manner, but well enough. He's been five days here and we are hoping he's getting better. We love him very much. I adore him and I travelled 1,400 kilometres to encourage Diego Armando Maradona. And I hope he recovers because we are very worried. Upon his discharge from hospital, a court ruling initially confined Diego to the private park clinic in Buenos Aires. The decision was overturned four months later. On this day and date, a resolution has been passed which is not entirely firm yet. But which authorizes the transfer of Diego Armando Maradona to a clinic located in Cuba. He requested the clinic himself in an audience held days ago. Which received the consent of his family members with the condition that there were certain guarantees. Maradona was transferred to the Sensam Clinic in Cuba. Although he had been coming to Cuba since 2000 to overcome his addictions, this time he was given strict guidelines by the court and his family. Having felt the tap of the Grim Reaper on his shoulder, he needed little motivation to regain control of his life. Bloated, obese, and barely able to speak at the time of his hospitalization, 
Maradona bravely faced the long, hard road ahead. Even at the very beginning of the journey, he was upbeat about what happened. He is stable, his vital signs are normal, and his attitude is positive. He had a good night and is resting and having a good morning. Despite the amazing turnaround, Diego remained humble. I don't pretend to be an example for anybody. For me, it is enough to take it one day at a time. Right now, I'm on very good terms with my daughters, with my parents, my colleagues and my friends. And that's all I can ask God for. God gave me a second chance, and I'm grasping this new opportunity. I just tell them to take pleasure in playing football. The money, the millions, that comes along later, naturally. What's important is to enjoy football. There's no success without taking pleasure in the game. After surviving two very close calls, Maradona has changed his outlook on life. His two decades of indulging in a rock star lifestyle are behind him, and the Argentinian great is quite literally a shadow of his former self. As a coach of the national team, he now has the opportunity to give back to the game that gave him so much over his career. Regularly seen in public smiling and waving to his fans, a much healthier looking Maradona proudly announced on Argentine television in May 2007 that he had quit drinking and had not used drugs in two years. After retiring, Maradona was keen to contribute to the sport that had given him so much pleasure. What I would like to do now is to try and give Boca everything that I learned over many years, good or bad, and put them at Boca's service, and we'll see what happens from there. Not only did he plough his knowledge into the sport, he also put in plenty of time through numerous charity events. In May 2006, he took part in a football match called Soccer Aid, a British charity event that raises money for UNICEF. The game featuring World Cup legends, celebrities and other football stars is played between England and the rest of the world. Maradona joined other legends like Gianfranco Zola, Brian Robson and Marcel de Sally. Two years later he was at it again, this time playing in Bolivia to raise money for the victims of the flood that left more than 60 people dead and nearly 100,000 homeless in February 2008. Years earlier, he'd taken part in another friendly match that was organised in his own honour. In November 2001, 50,000 fans crammed into Argentina's Bombonera Stadium to watch the then overweight striker join other football legends in a one-off match between Argentina and the All-Stars. Undeniably a little sluggish, he still managed to pull off some moments of Maradona magic, reminding the crowd of his former brilliance with deft touches and a cracking attempt from 30 metres out. However, the highlight of the match, as far as the fans were concerned, would have to be seeing their hero score twice to claim victory for his team, with both goals coming from penalties. Afterwards, the World Cup hero thanked the crowd for the tribute. I've always tried to be happy while playing soccer and to make all of you happy. I think I achieved that and the truth is that I didn't expect all of this. This is too much for one person, for one footballer. I thank you with all of my heart. Maradona's global notoriety 
and amazing life story inspired Serbian filmmaker Emir Kustorica to create a documentary about the Argentinian. The film entitled Maradona by Kustorica explores every aspect of the footballer's life, including his struggles with drugs and alcohol and his relationship with the devoted fans who worship him as their god. Costa Rica believes it was a story that had to be told. And I think Maradona was going in different parts of his life through the different periods and he stayed the best player ever on this planet. Nobody was playing better football and I think nobody will play better football than Maradona. And this is important story about this man. There's also been a film made about the famous number 10. Titled El Diez, in Spanish, the 10 use song and dance to chronicle the extraordinary life that Maradona has lived thus far, conveying the message that the actions of a single person can make a difference. He left behind the lesson that the poor, the humble person also had the right to progress and become a person who can do good in the world. No sporting legend's career is complete without a statue erected in their honour. Luckily for Maradona, the Boca Juniors decided that the winner of the 1986 World Cup deserved such a tribute. Standing three metres tall and made out of bronze and cement, his 300 kilogram likeness stands proudly in the Boca Juniors Museum in Buenos Aires. The statue was financed by fans of the football great. Maradona also won the Golden Ball for Best Player of the 1986 FIFA World Cup, where he also scored the goal of the century. With so many devoted fans, it was only a matter of time before one obsessed supporter took his love for Maradona that one step further. And on his 38th birthday, the Church of Maradona was formed. We all knew he was the God. We had to start up a movement, and what better than a church of Maradona? If we have the God, how do we congregate? As a church, that's the idea, to find a name for this, but in the world of soccer is the church of Maradona. It is unprecedented, and we expect from now on it will continue to grow worldwide as it has been doing. The church boasts around 100,000 followers from over 60 countries. The Church of Maradona is more about loving football than praying. He makes magic. Compared to the Roman time and the nowadays in which popularity is projected through the football as a supreme sport on the planet, he is qualified to be a god. God or mortal, Maradona certainly brought with him a touch of the divine.